In this video, we're going to learn about the Fury overview and just have some understanding about the Fury. The topics we'll be covering, they are what is Fury, what was the problem we had with the ECC GUI, Fury design principles and types of Fury applications. So let us discuss what is Fury. With Fury, SAP Fury is a new user experience, also known as UX for SAP software that address the most broadly and frequently used SAP functions. The term Fury is an Italian word that means flowers. It represents a personalized, responsive and simple user experience across devices. So what is a personalization? What is a responsiveness? All these things we will see in the next video. There are approximately 1400 role based apps that supports a variety of roles in line of business like HR, finance, manufacturing, procurement and sales. Fury apps work consistently crosswise over gadgets like desktop, tablets or smartphones. So that's the beauty about this. So GUI can only be used on a computer wherever this can be on a tablet, can be on a smartphone as well. While you, for the sales guy, they are on the fields, they are seeing a customer immediately. They can, they can create a, a sales order, they can approve a sales order, they can approve a credit, stuff like that. Everything can be done on the mobile phones. Fury apps are developed using the user interface UI5 and OData services. So we'll talk about UI5 and OData services in the later videos where we'll talk about some troubleshooting stuff. Um, Fury licensing fee. Now this is a very bit complex topic and that keep on changing. So whatever I'm explaining here is, is valid as of today, but that may be changing uh, in the future as well. Initially SAP charge a license fee per Fury user. But after receiving complaints from the customers about paying for an additional license on the top of their existing ERP on-premise license, but later SAP announced that Fury would be free for any customer with, any S with, with an SAP license. That means if you got on-premise system, then Fury's, Fury will be free. The decision resulted in increased market demand for Fury-based custom UIFI applications. Now let us discuss why we needed Fury, what were the problem we had with the ECC GUI that we used from the last many years. Old SAP GUI can only be accessed with the desktop GUI for most transactions. As we know that we need, a, we need a PC, we need a laptop to access the GUI screen. Um, there is no flexibility for the uh, say sales guy on the field or someone, uh, some sales guy who is visiting a customer. They uh, they can't access the GUI on a on a mobile phone, for example, or on a tablet. GUI transactions are complex. Indeed, they are complex. As you can see, for example, this purchase order screen, there are so many fields, so many tabs, and under within each tab, there are so many different fields. For example, under this item, see this material data, you will see a lot of fields again. Under quantity weight, delivery schedule, there are different tabs and so many fields. If you think about it, it's a newcomer who never used SAP before, for them it's very, very complex. Of course, when you're used to it, then you know what data is where, how to use it. But for a newcomer, it's really, really complex. It will take a while to understand and get used to this screen. So that was in this problem that the GUI transaction were complex. So this screen doesn't, for example, ideally, a user should have access to the screen that that he will be using uh, for his day-to-day -day, uh, task. For example, if they just need to approve a uh, say contract or approve a purchase regulation, they don't need to go to the, this full screen. There should be a, something quick thing that way they can just overview and just approve it, stuff like that. So they, these things are provided with the Fury apps that we'll discuss later on. Some screen for all, same screen for all users to perform different tasks, no user personalization option. So for example, if it's a sales rep or purchasing guy, or it's a customer service rep or it's account receivable person, everyone is, if someone has to display an order, a purchase order or a sales order, some stuff like that, everyone will be displaying the same screen. We do not have a custom screen for a sales guy. We don't have a custom screen for an account receivable guy. That means everyone has to go through that complex screen. 
So ideally what should have, so when the purchase, if, if say account receivable person has to see a purchase order, they will be seeing only what they need to see, which is more, which is the account specific data. They should be able to customize the screen. They, sh able, they should be able to see what they want to see. They should be able to hide the, what they don't want to see, stuff like that. That's not available in this screen, but these things are available with Fury apps that we'll discuss in the next video. Training is must for a new user. When a new user will um, come in to the company and never use SAP before, then it's must for them to, to learn. We, we need to provide them the user training. They can't use, start using the SAP system straight away if they never used it before. Whereas in case of Fury, it's, it's very straightforward. It's like, it's Facebook. If I never use Facebook and if I just create an account and login, I can be able to sort out most of the stuff. Okay, so same thing with the Fury, they'll, they'll, they will be able to see, uh, they will be able to perform their day-to-day -day task quickly, uh, easily, with less training. It doesn't mean that they do, not require, they, they do not require training, they require very minimal training, or they can also work out most of the stuff themselves as a new, as a new user. System doesn't guide where the problem is. For example, this is called embedded analytics that we'll discuss later on. What embedded analytics is, is the SAP, SAP's next generation analytics capability that can be achieved with, within SAP S4 HANA. With this capability, the user community and the IT developer can perform real-time analytics using the live transaction data, merging large number of tables and millions of row on a fly. So this will be uh, doing the calculation on the fly with embedded analytics, you can also able to drill down within a report and system will tell you where the problem is. Okay, so again, we'll, we'll talk more about it later on. Now we'll discuss, so these were the problems we had with the traditional ECC GUI screen. Now we'll discuss about the Fury design principle. So with Fury, it is role-based. That means user will access screen as per their role, like reps or HR manager and all that. So it's a role, completely role-based. It's very responsive. It can be used on the PC, it can be used on a tablet, can be used on a mobile phone. It's very simple, it's very quick and easy to use for a newcomer as well. It's coherent, that means it's intuitive and consistent response across all platform. That means whether you access it from the mobile phone, whether you access it from a laptop, whether you access it from a tablet, the response uh, and the consistency will be always the same and delightful that provides pleasing user experience. Now we'll discuss about types of Fury apps. What are the different types of Fury apps? There are basically three types of Fury apps. One is transactional and then we got fact sheet and then we got analytics. So let's discuss one by one. So what is transactional? These apps provides us access to transaction that let us create or change an entire transaction like sales order, purchase order, or any financial transaction, or it can be a master data as well, like customer master data, supplier master data, material master record, etc. So these are the transaction apps where we're creating a transaction and the transaction can be, as I just said, can be master data, can be invoice, can be sales order, can be purchase order. So let me show you this one, transactional apps. So for example, um, if I, if you, when you see a purchase order, for example, if I jump to the, if I open a purchase order, manage purchase order. For search here for IKO press enter. So it will, it will show me all the IKO linked uh, purchase orders. If I open one of the purchase order, so this is your transactional app, right? So for a purchase order, same way if I open a, a supplier, then if I click on this supplier, then that will also show me a supplier screen or the supplier master data. That's also a transactional app. If I click on this 
a material link, it will open the material, it will show me the material master record, that's also a transaction lab. So these are the transaction lab. Just trying to open the material master, so let me go back to the other screen. This is the transaction app. Then we got analytical apps. So these apps provide us insight into real-time operations of our businesses by collecting and displaying key figures directly in, in, our, in our browser. You can drill down into the app for further KPI analysis of the data. So these are also a new feature, a great thing with, um, uh, let, me, let me go back to the home page. If I go to the purchasing analyst screen, here it will, this, it will show the analytical apps. So these app, as soon as you go to this screen, these apps will refresh and show you the recent data. Any apps that's for example, here showing you, so it's showing you three hours ago refresh, but because I'm logged on from the last three hours, I did not log off. So as soon as you first time log on, log in, it will show you the recent, it will refresh the data without you running any transaction. And you can also click on this little refresh button if you want to manually refresh it. So here, if I click on this say overdue purchase item, so these are the 411 purchase, overdue purchase item. You can click on this one, and same thing you can see others, for example, purchase order delivery, average delivery, and stuff like that. It's showing minus. Uh, we need to check why it's saying minus. But for example, if I click on the purchase order items, it will show you a graphical view. It will show you a graphical view here. See this one. So showing you for this vendor, for this vendor, how many purchase racks were there, like that. And on the on the here at the bottom, you can see all the vendors or on the top, it's showing you the net value in Euro, stuff like that. You can also also click on any of this. So for example, if you want to click on this, this 32, what is 32, you can click on it. It will jump to the detail of that skin. For example, it's asking you, you want to sort it by plant, by purchasing group, purchasing category, material group. If I say by plant, it will show me the data linked to this vendor by plant so showing you more details about this one so you can do some more analysis if you don't know what this app is all about i'll show you later on where you can find the information but i'm just showing you a quick overview here you can also click on this tabular view if i click on this icon it will show you a different view i can go back to the old view i can click on this button to export the data to spreadsheet and there's some settings if i click on this setting it will show you some settings for example, what you want to see, what you want to hide. For example, I want to uh, see the calendar month. I want to see the company code. I can add them and I can say OK. It will add the data as well and show you the data as well. See here at the bottom showing you the most stuff. So it's a company code you can see as well. So you can this click on this plus icon to zoom this icon to zoom in zoom out stuff like that so you can play with these apps so let me go back same goes for for example if i click on um, see purchase order delivery average delivery time in days so it's showing you minus 19 because i think it it was because i created some orders and immediately i migrated them so even though they had say five days or some delivery time i immediately migrated them so if i click on it it will show you that data as well So, so it's showing you here on the on the this side left hand side showing you all the vendors, and here it's showing you the number of um, every delivery time. So you can click on anything, for example, this one. You can jump to the next screen, stuff like that. So that's your analytical um, apps. So there's a second type of apps, which is analytical apps. Then we've got fact sheet. 
These apps are used for searching and exploring objects. They are also used to navigate between related objects. For example, if you search in the Fury search window for a certain material, Fury apps, Fury displays the material detail in the search result. So what that means is, here if I go to the home page, on the top you can see this search button on the extreme top. If I click on it, I'll talk about this search in more detail in a later video, but quickly if I, you can search within these objects, all these objects see that you can see. Now these objects can be customized by the technical guy. For example, you can't see here material, you can't see here bomb, you can't see here purchase order. Instead you can see cost center, more data linked to uh, accounting. So this can be customized by the UI developer. But for now, for example, if I want to search here, it's like a Google search, searching everywhere for the something. For example, I want to search for IKO, ECO. It will search ICO in all those area that are shown that were shown in this drop down. But as I said, this drop down can be customized by the UI developer. So again, we'll talk in more details later on. But for now, if I'm searching for IKO, it will search for IKO within these objects only, within all these objects only. So it will come up with some data because this is trying to search in, the, in a big area. So it's come up with saying IQ I found in this, in this one, in this one, these documents. So it found in these document. If IQ was there in the material master as well, and it there was showing up here a material, it will show you the material as well. So string trying to search. So it's saying I just found in general entries because there was no material here no PI record here, it didn't find anywhere in the PI record and all that. So, but here we're just talking about the type of app. So here also you can click on, for example, general entries, I can click on it. And here you can stay, so here you can also filter by say document type, W-E-R-E, -E, document type description. You can filter, there's so many ways to, to filter here. Um, you can click on any of the link and it will jump to that screen. For example, if I click on this first one, I can jump to that journal entry it will show me that so this is called um, third type of app which is a fact sheet that will show the fact sheet for example if I, if there's a newcomer in a company and he doesn't know what to do and he's, he's just playing with the system and that guy is searching for a material for example material searching for abc when you search for abc it will show you everything within abc or for example, if I'm searching for, so within apps, all the apps that we have, that I have access, I want to search for say, create purchase order, for example, then it will only search within the, apps and show you all the apps that are available like this. So that's, that's very handy, especially for a newcomer who doesn't know where to look for the data, they, they can search here like a Google search. So that's called fact sheet. So that's about all about this introduction part. So today we learned what is Fury and what the problem we had with the ECC GUI, uh, what are the design principles for the Fury apps and the types of Fury apps we have. So that's all about this. Thank you very much to watch this.